Hello my friends and welcome once more to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself Amata, where as always I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours as of the 4th of March. So we're going to begin things today with a little something from Intel and 10NM. Now I will say there's some refreshing honesty from Intel here and this was from the CFO George Davis and he presented at the Morgan Stanley TMT conference and he spoke with analysts about the 10NM process. Now they said that they were planning to push out the 10NM plus process this year but they did say that the 10NM node was just, quote, isn't going to be the best node Intel has ever had, and even went so far as to say that it will actually be less productive than 22NM. But let me read you his full quote so you can get a full picture of what he actually said. He said, quote, we are definitely in the 10NM era, and we launched Ice Clinic Client at the end of last year. We have GPUs coming out, a discrete GPU coming out this year. We have networking ASIC, obviously, at the end of the year. We have server SKUs coming out on 10, and interestingly, and indicative of how we are approaching process technology going forward, we also have 10 Plus coming out this year. And what we said is important to launch a new node as it is to launch intranode improvement every year. So we have our Tiger Lake client product coming out. It's going to be our on our 10 Plus node. And so I've been told by our client team that I'm not allowed to talk about how much incremental performance is going to come out of that. But there's the idea is to have a step function move without having to wait for 7NM between those and we'll be able to talk about that as since it's hard to find a conference where we've been able to talk about some of these things which we're planning on doing but we'll get the information out. And then he went on to say a little bit uh, later on, this just isn't going to be the best node that Intel has ever had, it's going to be less productive than 14NM, less productive than 22NM but we're excited about the improvements that we're seeing and we expect to start the 7NM period and with a much better profile performance over, over that starting at the end of 21. So the TLDR of all of that is that they're basically admitting that 10NM is just basically not going to make a much of a splash. They're, they're throwing up their hand and saying, look, it is what it is. We're going to get it out. We're going to focus on getting the plus improvements out there. Obviously, we're probably going to see plus plus and plus 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 knowing Intel. And undoubtedly, we will see some interesting improvements like we've seen Skylake pushed to some pretty impressive degrees I will say but the main takeaway from this is that they're not going to begin the 7NM period until the end of 2021. Now obviously 10NM was stuck in this weird limbo for ages where people were convinced it was cancelled and then Intel said no it's not cancelled and but still we kept getting delayed and delayed and obviously you know it's finally here and it's just kind of like Okay, you know, AMD is already on 7NM and are going to be doing 7NM Plus soon. Now, obviously, there's more to things than just the node, obviously. But still, it's not great that Intel are obviously having so much struggles with 10NM, but I do appreciate their honesty here. But speaking of AMD, we actually have quite an AMD-focused video for you, and the first item on our AMD itinerary is regarding the RX 590. So this is regarding the RX 590 GME, and this is according to EXP Review, AMD Ball Partners are set to launch the new SKU, which obviously will be called RX 590 GME. And it is a variant of the RX 590, I know, shocking, featuring lower clock speeds. Now, unfortunately, we just don't know the reference clock of the GME edition. And as far as I'm aware, this is only for the Chinese market and it's currently available for pre-order on the Chinese JD.com website and will be launching in just a few days on March the 9th. However, we do have some much more interesting and impressive news from AMD up next regarding Ryzen 4000 and some benchmarks. So these are once again thanks to our good friends Rogame and Tum Appysank over on Twitter whose names you'd be very familiar with by this point. They of course have been the source of many many leaks over the last year or so. So, first of all, we actually have some specs for the RX, um, not RX, sorry, should I say Ryzen 5 4600. It has 6 cores, 12 threads, and a base clock of 3 GHz and a boost of 4. It is going to come in a standard 55 watt and a binned 35 watt HS variant. And we're going to be seeing 6 compute units 
for a total of 384 stream processors with a clock speed of 1500 MHz and 11 megs of cache. Now the second chip they actually see in the benchmarks is the 4800HS, which is the 35 watt binned variant of the 4800H. This chip however has 8 cores and 16 threads, clock speed of 2.9 base and 4.2 GHz boost. It has 7 compute units for 448 cores, clocked at 1600 MHz for a total cache of 12 megs. As for what chips these actually being pitted against in the benchmarks while well, we see them being faced off against Intel's Comet Lake H i7 10750H which is a 6 core 12 thread part with a 2.6 GHz base and reported boost clock of 5 GHz. So now that we've got all that red tape out of the way, interesting red tape but red tape nonetheless, we can actually move on to the benchmark results. So, we are going to focus first of all on the 3D Mark Firestrike Physics CPU score, obviously. So, the 4800S has a score of 21254, and the 4600H has a score of 18565. And we also see some time spire results as well. Once again, we're going to focus on the physics CPU score here. So we also see the for, for the 4800H a score of 8,942 and then a score of 8,868 and then for the 4600H we see a score of 6,699. As for the Intel uh, parts for Firestroke we see a score of 17,921 and then for TimeSpy we see a score of 6,761. So, to put a TLDR and everything I just said, that is pretty damn impressive, to be honest. And it does also line up with some of the previous leaks that we have seen. For example, like video cards is um, posting of a benchmark for the 4900X, uh, S, sorry, should I say, which was in an Asus Zephyrus G14 notebook, which had a 260 Max-Q graphics card, and we saw a physics score there of... 13,335 and a 3D Mark score overall of 16,401. So all in all, the 4000 series just looking at these benchmarks is shaping up to be quite the stormer to be honest. Especially considering this is a mobility part. If you've been thinking about a laptop or notebook for yourself in the future, if you can wait, it might be worth holding off to wait and see what's going on in terms of pricing, availability, and obviously what models are available to you in your price range you may very well be worth at least considering a Ryzen 4000 part obviously you could save some cash by going for an older part but if you're looking for new and shiny definitely worth taking a look at at least so we're going to finish up our AMD segment of the video with some more good news, this time in the supercomputer sector. So AMD has scored a pretty massive jackpot, if I'm honest, as they have just announced, and you can of course find a link to their press release in the description below this video if you so desire to give it a read. But the TLDR is that they have secured a major win in the HPC sector with next-gen Epic and Radeon accelerators and they're going to be powering the 2 Exaflop El Capitan supercomputer which will be used by the US Department of Energy or DOE and should be operational by 2023. Now this was not a victory that was easy to come by. Intel, AMD and Nvidia were all competing to win this contract but AMD have actually come out victorious on the CPU and GPU front. And Bill Goldstein, the director of the Livermore Lab, where it's actually going to be used, that being the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, he said, quote, We expect when it's delivered to the laboratory in 2023, it'll be the fastest supercomputer in the world. As for the specs of this machine, we do know that it's going to be powered by Epic Genoa, which is a Zen 4 based part, and of course, Radeon Instinct as well but it will be using the third generation of AMD's Infinity architecture, which will provide the connection between the four Radeon Instinct GPUs and the one Epic CPU included in each node of El Capitan. Now, Genoa was something they announced actually pretty damn recently. They showed it off on their data center roadmap, which you should be enjoying on screen. And it is currently in production and obviously is coming out in 2021. 
uh, as well. So obviously we're going to be seeing epic parts for the consumer level before we'll ever see it take pl place in this very impressive sounding supercomputer, but still a pretty damn nice win for AMD. So we're going to finish up today's proceedings with some news from NVIDIA. This time is a tweet from Kitty Corgi, whose name you should be fairly familiar with. They did a leak fairly recently, and the tweet just reads, GA102, 7GPC, 5376FP32 simmed, and only 12GB of VRAM, 140% RTX 2080 Thai performance. So what does that actually mean in plain English, if you ask? Well, essentially they're saying that the RTX 3080 Ti is about 40% faster than the 2080 Ti. Now it is worth pointing out that this particular person has not had any significant leaks which have actually proven to be correct, but this actually makes sense. 30 to 40% sounds about right to me and lines up with other claims. Now, Paul has heard from various sources on his end that NVIDIA are actually getting quite nervous about AMD's Navi 2X cards. Apparently, that move has caught them a little bit by surprise and caused them to actually give these picks a bit of a bump. Now, obviously, that is just something we've heard from sources. Do take that with a pinch of salt, yada, yada, yada. You know the drill. Still, 30 to 40% faster. Now obviously there is more to a new architecture than just pure speed increase. Are we going to see improvements in ray tracing performance for instance? Are they going to give us any new features that we might not be expecting? Obviously we're going to have to wait and see to find out the answer to those questions, but to be honest I would very much be surprised if there wasn't some improvement in ray tracing performance. That's obviously something they're going to continue to push as more and more uh, developers and obviously people such as Microsoft and Sony are adopting the technology for the next gen consoles. So yes, we undoubtedly will see some improvements there, but obviously AMD are not going to be waiting in the wings just lounging around either. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see what happens when it comes to the next gen of Nvidia versus AMD. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Hope you've all had a wonderful Wednesday. Thursday tomorrow guys, you got this, it's almost the weekend. Anyway, that's me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, do remember to like and subscribe. It does help out a great deal. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.